Planeswalkers, Trainers, Duelists and Tamers, welcome. Last video we looked at the binder and took a look at all the cards from Jungle. So if you missed that, I will leave a link in the description below to that video. Uh, make sure you check it out after this one. Today we are going to go over Fossil, uh, the last set from really the kind of the first series, um, the first chunk of sets, the base to fossil format, uh, the last of the, the card pool for that. Uh, so we'll take a look. Honorable mention goes to this Mew promo. The fossil set gave all 150 original Pokemon finally a card. Um, the Japanese version of fossil actually had this Mew card in that set. Uh, in the States, we got it as a separate promo. Um, so we got 150, they got 151. I figured Mew deserved an honorable mention there. So starting off, we have the iconic Aerodactyl. Uh, he's the cover card in one of the packs. He was on a lot of the promotional items. He's an actual fossil Pokemon. The episode where they discover the fossils and Aerodactyl makes Ash's Charmeleon evolve into Charizard out of pure spite just so he can grow some wings and fly and catch up to him. It's such a great episode. And this Aerodactyl card is pretty good for a stage one. It's got 60 HP, which is nothing to write home about. Um, but it's Pokemon power, prehistoric power, stops players from evolving cards. Um, this was one of several Floodgate um, type effects. These, these static elements that add to the gameplay, uh, which was something Pokemon didn't really do before this set. Uh, there's uh, Muck is probably another big notable one. Um, so kind of, you know, throwing a wrench into your opponent's plans. Uh, it's wing attack for three colorless for 30 damage is not a great rate, but it is colorless. So you can theoretically splash this into any deck. Weakness to grass is solid. It resists fighting, which is, you know, Hitmonchan's running around everywhere. Uh, resists other Aerodactyls, which I always find articuno uh, Moving down, we have Articuno, the only bird so far to be printed was Zapdos, which was the only one of the three that got a printing in base set. Uh, otherwise, the Legendary Birds didn't get one. So it's nice that they finally each have a home here in Fossil. Uh, Articuno is really good. 70 HP on a basic is fantastic. It's got no weakness. It resists fighting. And its attacks are a little clunky and expensive, but it had a perfect home in Rain Dance decks. We have Ditto, which is such an interesting Pokemon. Its transformability basically makes it copy any of the, uh, the opponent's Pokemon that they're using. So you can kind of create some fun situations there. Okay. Moving on, we got Dragonite. Um, I love Dragonite as a Pokemon. I just think the dragons themselves I, I was such a huge fan of as a kid. But the... The concept that Dragonite is this all-powerful, crazy, flies at all these supersonic speeds and, and has this incredible muscle mass, and it's such a docile and friendly creature. Um, it delivers mail. You know, it's just kind of sitting there, chilling in the rainbow. It's it's just such a it's just cool contrast. Gengar, um, next to Dragonite, is perfect. You know, the first dragon, the first ghost... Uh, Gengar is one of my all-time favorites. The Curse Poke Power um, on him is pretty cool. You get to move a damage counter from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another one. Uh, very reminiscent of the Curse damage in the Game Boy games. And we have Haunter. It's another thing that Fossil did was add new evolution lines, of course, but also complete some. Um, Ghastly and Haunter received cards in base set, which were pretty underwhelming. Um, Haunter and this Ghastly are actually great cards um, that I definitely recommend using. Transparency, uh, whenever an attack does anything to Haunter, you have to flip a coin. If it's head, you prevent all effects of that attack, including the damage. Um, so Haunter was pretty tough to hit, on top of no weakness, no retreat, and a resistance to fighting. Moving on, we have Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee was always the one that I preferred over Hitmonchan. 
um, in the video games and kind of from a design perspective. But the card is definitely lacking. Hitmonchan has more HP. Hitmonchan can deal more damage more efficiently. Um, he definitely outshines the Hitmonlee card, but it's some great art nonetheless. We have Hypno. This is Hypno's first card, which is interesting. Drowsy was printed in base set and then wouldn't complete his evolution line. Definitely a theme they were going for in Fossil here. Speaking of Fossil, we have another Fossil Pokemon, Kabutops. Um, this is another fun one. I never used it in the games. I always opted for a different water type, usually Lapras or Vaporeon um, were my go-tos, but... Um, very cool art on this one. And speaking of Lapras, this card is really great. 80 HP on a basic is huge. Water Gun's a solid attack. Confuse Ray's a solid attack. And had a nice home in Rain Dance as well. Um, by this point, Rain Dance had a several different options that they could use and you could kind of cater the deck more to your play style. It's another Magneton. And we have Moltres. Uh, Moltres was used in Wildfire decks, which of course the namesake is based on this attack. It was actually a mill strategy, um, which kind of felt like a like a cheap way to secure a victory, especially when I was a kid and I learned about it. You know, you just, you run out of cards that you can't play anymore. Kind of sounded like, you know, like a, like, you know, disqualified kind of a thing. But now the intricacies that go into a mill deck and how they tick and when they're really, you know, kind of high functioning and all the different moving pieces, I find it interesting. Um, I think Wildfire is actually a really fun deck. And here we have Muck. Uh, Muck was definitely a great card. I never really ran a Muck playing the video games, um, but I remember that Ash's Muck was always very affectionate towards him. Um, this card is great. 70 HP is solid on a stage one. Um, it's Toxic Gas ignores all Pokemon powers other than Toxic Gas. Uh, and, you know, it adds to that, those floodgates that we were talking about before of, of just, you know, you park a muck and then all the Pokemon powers are off. So no energy trans, no rain dance, uh, shuts down prehistoric power as well. It's kind of who gets out first, you know, if your Aerodactyl's out before your muck, you can't play your muck. But if your muck's out before your Aerodactyl, the Aerodactyl doesn't do its job. That's an interesting race there. Here's a... Fossil Raichu. Um, I like this art a lot more than the art from base set. The That one's just the, you know, the standard Kensugi Mori art on a background, uh, which I like on certain Pokemon, of course, but this one's just kind of hanging out. He's just saying hi. It's comfy. Raichu's design has definitely grown on me over the years. I know they kind of painted him to be this big bully with Lieutenant Surge, but like... You know, art like this and other media that I've seen Raichu in, he's, you know, he's, he's just as lovable as Pikachu. Finally here, we are back at Zapdos. I prefer this Zapdos much more than the base set one. Um, I just love the art. I think the purple in contrast with Zapdos's yellow was a great choice. I think this Thunderstorm attack is fun to use. Uh, just like the rest of the birds, he has no weakness, and he resists fighting, which is crazy, um, since most Electro Pokemon are weak to fighting in the game. So that's a nice change. If you're running an Electric deck, I definitely recommend Zapdos. Either Zapdos, but I prefer the Fossil one. Moving on, we have Arbok here. Of course, uh, everybody remembers Jesse's Arbok from the anime. Nothing really to write home about as far as stats or different attacks. Uh, Terror Strike is pretty interesting. You flip a coin, and if it's heads, and if your opponent has any bench Pokemon, he or she chooses one of them and then switches it with the defending. So it's kind of like a escape rope, I guess, nowadays is the card you'd want to reference with that. It's a, it's a solid attack. It's interesting. There's not a lot of attacks that really do that. 
Um, anything that's kind of the, the only one or one of few, even if they're not great, um, they of course always stand out. And we have Cloyster here, uh, 50 HP, stage one. Nothing crazy on the attacks. Um, two for 30 is solid, and you can flip a coin for ta uh, paralysis, which is all right. But then if it's tails, it doesn't even do damage, so that's not great. But um, The art's solid. I like the purple with the yellow contrast, much like the Zapdos. We have Ghastly here. I always thought that there was some kind of connection between Cloyster and Ghastly, just the way that they look so similar and the fact that they're next to each other in the Pokedex and the fact that there's nothing tying them together other than those two things is always interesting to me. But we got Ghastly here, 50 HP on a basic that evolves twice is pretty high. Uh, Lick for one Psychic does 10 and a chance for Paralysis which is already a decent attack. Um, the energy conversion attack is decent as well, but with no weakness, a resistance to fighting, and no retreat, um, this is an excellent card, and I think it's pretty underrated. It's overshadowed by stuff like Scyther, um, but I think Ghastly should see more play than it does. We got Golbat here. Uh, Golbat's not that great from the card perspective. I kind of... Even in the video games, even in the shows, it kind of gets outshined by other things that are similar. It won't really come into its own until we get Crobat. Um, it'll get a Dark Golbat card in later sets, and then Dark Crobat, of course, in Generation 2. And then it kind of gets a little more hype around it. But it's funny to think that it basically has a similar stat line to Aerodactyl. But, of course, Aerodactyl is a much better card than Golbat. And from Golbat, we have Golduck. It's another one of those cards that has, you know, it's one type, but you can, you need Psychic Energy to use one attack and Water Energy to use another attack. Um, definitely Watsi's attempt at kind of playing around with that, similar to Gold cards from Magic the Gathering. And we got Golem here. Golem does 100 damage for 4 energy, which is pretty crazy. Um, I like the background as well. He's kind of just rolling down a hill, but I like the pinks and the reds that they use to kind of contrast. And from Golem to Graveler, three energy for 40 damage is all right. Um, but I really like the art on this one as well. It, it looks... You know, like I can see somebody kind of drawing it with crayon. It's a great piece of art. I never really used Geodude, Graveler, Golem, any of those Pokemon, but they're cool. And we have Kingler here. I like the art on this one, more purples and yellows. And we have Magmar. This is probably one of my favorite cards from all three of the original sets. Base Magmar was very underwhelming uh, as a card. And finally to see this Magmar, which is not only just an uncommon, but it's on par with the other Haymaker All-Stars, Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, Scyther. Uh, it's just, it's a great card. Smokescreen for 10, and then your opponent has to flip heads if they want to attack. Um, you know, and then 20 damage for two. And then they, uh, you have the chance for poison on a coin flip. Definitely a great card. One retreat's great. My buddy John's favorite Pokemon is Magmar. We got Omastar here. Wrapping up the fossil Pokemon evolutions. And we got Sandslash. I believe Sandshrew was another one that was in a different set and then finally got his evolution. And we have Seedra here. Seedra evolves from the Horsey, uh, that I think is actually a solid card as well. We'll be getting to him pretty soon. We have Slowbro. I love the art on this Slowbro. This perfectly encapsulates Slowbro and his, his doofy energy of just kind of you know, sharing one brain cell 
between him and that shell on his tail. His strange behavior ability lets you move damage to him, um, as long as it doesn't knock him out. The slow bro that is coming out in the Scarlet and Violet base set actually has a similar ability, but you can knock it out if you want to. Um, so I think it's nice. I love when they use cards and pay homage in the newer sets to the older sets. And we've got Tentacruel here. Nothing exciting. Tentacruel is another Pokemon that I never really got the opportunity to use um, in the video games. I always pick Bulbasaur, of course, so I kind of try to stay away from poison types. And speaking of poison types, we have Weezing. Uh, Coughing was another one that had a printing earlier on, and now it finally gets its evolution line completed. Um, Self-Destruct is powerful. It's 60 damage for 3 energy, but it does 10 damage to each Pokemon, and it's going to knock itself out. So hopefully if you can get a knockout on that, um, if you're ahead on prizes, you can kind of eke the race closer. Um, you know, that's an interesting strategy to use. But I like the art on it. He's clearly in some kind of, like, gross swamp, and you can just see stuff oozing out of it and the, the smells. Like, you can just, you can look at it and you can tell it's gross. And we got Ekans here. I always liked the art on this Ekans. It just, it looks sinister. It looks like a scary snake. The, all the fossil cards kind of have their own personality that like they, almost they belong together. They belong in this set. The set's always had this creepy vibe to it with the, the skeletal hand and the, the dark aggressive Pokemon. Even the trainer cards, uh, which I'll show you in a second, are, are just... A little sinister, you know, a little edgy. Um, that, that classic 90s edgy feel. And we got Geodude wrapping up that line. He's got some rocks kind of throwing at him. Stuff like Geodude, um, stuff like Machop. I feel like the fighting Pokemon always do a great job of exemplifying this atmosphere that these kinds of Pokemon live in. And we've got Grimer. Grimer's solid, 50 HP for an evolving basic Pokemon is good. Um, Nasty Goo is just colorless, so you can use that attack in any deck. Um, certainly decks that had no intentions of attacking with Muck would use Muck. So I like that they gave Grimer a colorless attack. So if you're really in a pinch, even if you're not in a grass deck, you can still attack with your Grimer. Here with Horsey, 40 HP, it's got the smokescreen attack. Uh, your opponent has to flip a coin to attack you. That's uh, one energy, it does 10 damage. Uh, it's just really solid. It pairs nicely with Magmar. I believe both of these were in kind of the same starter deck as like a, a theme of, of the deck to just kind of, you know, use smoke screens and give your opponent a hard time. And here's Krabby. Um, it's got the Call for Family attack, like we talked about on the Nidoran and Jungle. Search for a bunch of Krabby, kind of put them on the bench. Um, I'm sure that's a kind of a fun strategy. Like I talked about with the Sea King in Jungle, um, you know, it's 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 a perfect transition, um, a nice curve. You know, turn one, you can get a bunch of Krabbies out, thin your deck, fill up your bench. Turn two, you can start hitting with an Iron Grip, or you can evolve and start attacking. Um, you know, not a top-tier tournament-winning strategy, but definitely something fun if you want to build some kind of a theme deck. And here we have Almanite. He is chilling in these kind of ruins here. I like the colors on these. The foliage there. And we got Psyduck. Uh, it's another perfect example. The, got that fish in the background. You know, like I said in the last video, I love when Pokemon, especially the old cards, will showcase bugs or fish or birds that aren't Pokemon. They're, they're just animals. And we got Shelder here. He's pretty doofy. He's got that, you know, nothing upstairs, toys in the attic kind of look. He's only got 30 HP. Shelder's not a great one to use, but... The hide in the shell attack is interesting. That's another example of that, you know, attacks that were made for the card game. 
Uh, we got Slowpoke. This is kind of a weird art direction, but I like it. I feel like it works with Slowpoke. It's like a almost like some kind of a like a children's cartoon. He's just out here in the grass with the clouds vibing. And we have Tentacool. His cowardice ability is pretty interesting. Um, reminds me a lot of Toad Cool in Scarlet and Violet. Um, not necessarily the card, but the you know the whole premise that, that Toad Cool is so difficult to catch. Um, he's always running away. He's always you know scared of his own shadow type of Pokemon. So I think when they designed that, they kind of had this in mind. And we've got Zubat. Um, again, you know, the line really, it, it feels kind of like it misses something, and I think Crobat was exactly what it needed, and I'm glad that they get Crobat in Generation 2. Moving on to the trainers, we have Mr. Fuji. Uh, of course, you rescue him from the top of the tower in Lavender Town. He's kind of there hanging out with all these different Pokemon. And we have Energy Search. Um, Energy Search is a great card. It doesn't see as much play as I thought it would when I started learning about this format, mostly just because of Lass. Um, you know, but it's basically like a, like a fetch land and magic. Um, you know, I think it's a great card. I like to use them in my decks, especially if I know that, you know, neither player is going to be running Lass. I'll, I'll take a couple Energy Searches in. I always thought that the robot hand in Energy Search was the... Kind of the skeletal hand on the for the fossil logo. I always thought that they were connected somehow as a kid. Um, we've got Gambler. I like the dice. Um, you know, I like the CG art style that they're using for this. But again, it's like it's this dark room. It's it's got this kind of sinister. It's gambling. It's this sinister, evil, spooky, edgy vibe. Uh, same thing with this recycle. Like look at this. You know, this beat up poor little Jigglypuff. It's got the band-aid on it, it's got the weird logo in the background, the creepy claw arm. And the whole set kind of has this vibe. And of course, we will round out with probably the most important card in Fossil, Mysterious Fossil. You can see Kabutops here, you can see an Oma shell, you can see Aerodactyl's arm. Just the so much in this art. You know, it's it's what Kind of the whole set was was really built around was these fossils and they certainly are mysterious um, even in the you know it's it's been nine generations of pokemon now with scarlet and violet and we still only have a handful of fossil pokemon i'm surprised we didn't get any of this generation they might put some in the, the dlc um you know you never know but that is gonna do it we have taken a look at base set jungle and fossil now um, this is a great starting point if you want to get into retro formats. Um, I will be doing a video about retro formats and base fossil format uh, later down the road, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. Um, leave a comment down below with your thoughts and whatever your favorite card was. Make sure you subscribe so you can keep up with all the videos coming out. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.